Chip stocks continue to rise, major U.S. indices continue to renew record, and the Chinese authorities continue to announce further stimulus measures as the major central banks, except from Japan, of course, are busy calling the end of their monetary policy tightening. So what could go wrong, right? Welcome. This is Swiss Codes Daily Market Talk. The stock rally on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean continued yesterday as the technology and chip stocks remain in the driver's seat. Sentiment in Europe was bolstered by an almost 9% rally in ASML, which sells these machines to produce high-end chips to chip makers. And that was on news that their orders more than tripled last quarter. Yes, more than tripled. Now, there is a catch because a third of the 10 billion US dollar worth of orders came from China as Chinese companies rushed to buy these machines by the end of last year, just before the US and Dutch chip ban came into effect. But even if the Chinese demand will fade away from, well, this quarter due to the uh, export bans, ASML says that it expects sales to remain steady thanks to AI demand. And we believe them because TSM also says the same thing. They think that their sales will rise by 20% this year. Remember? So the chip stocks news flow remains ideal for the moment. This is the least we could say. As such, the ASML news also boosted the stock prices of our favorite AI plays yesterday. Nvidia hit another record at yesterday's trading session. TSM, as best buddy, extended gains as well. Microsoft was shortly a company worth 3 trillion US dollars. The S&P 500 and Nasdaq 100 indices hit a fresh record as well. And Netflix, which has nothing to do with this AI play, but which was just cheering 13 million new subscribers for the latest quarter jumped 10%. So there you go. It was a good session for all of those who are in this technology boat that sails north or for the rest of the market. Skepticism best described how people felt about an unsustainable rise in stock valuations, especially in technology stocks. And oh, I almost forgot because Tesla missed estimates in its latest quarterly earnings report as expected and warned that its EV sales growth will be notably lower this year and that the numbers will actually suffer until the company comes up with a cheaper model. So in other words, the series of price cuts from Tesla weren't enough to bolster demand in a way to keep the company smiling and keep the profits rising sufficiently. As such, Tesla refused to offer a specific growth target for this year and its share price took a 6% hit in the after hours trading after the results. Now Intel is due to report its earnings today. So. That's pretty much it for the company news for today. Overall, investors are so far quite happy with the chip industry news and they actually do care less about all the other themes out there as chips are were now crying louder uh, for the markets. Now, of course, in this race to own the chip stocks, a part of the attention is still on the global macroeconomic developments with well, China stealing all of the spotlight these days on this end with an endless series of new stimulus measures thrown into the mix to well, make investors come back to China. And the latest one came from the People's Bank of China, which announced yesterday that it will cut the reserve ratio for the Chinese banks by 50 basis points from February to release more liquidity to bolster the stock valuations in China because a lower reserve requirements for the banks mean that these banks could actually lend more money to people and people could be well spend this money to buy stuff like houses and stocks ideally so the letter will free up to an additional trillion yuan which equals to 139 billion US dollars will it help well we will see the good news is if it doesn't 
while the Chinese will continue until it does. So, the CSI 300 index finally, finally sees some positive reaction to the stimulus news. Stocks in Hong Kong are up by 10% since Monday this week. American crude is drilling above the $75 per barrel level and copper futures, which are a good gauge of global growth expectations, also seem to be gently convinced that the Chinese will put all their weight all that they need to to make things look better for China. So I hope they succeed, but note that earnings estimates for the MSCI China index are down by 1% since the start of this year, while estimates for the US S&P 500 only got better. And it is said that the Chinese banks and the consumer focused businesses in China will continue to feel the pinch of the so Chinese demand. Now, zooming out of China, the People's Bank of China's supportive policy may not echo well for the developed market's central banks, because let me explain. If the Chinese stimulus measures are successful, well, they should boost global inflation. This is exactly what we expected to happen last year, remember? Well, if China is successful this time in bringing its economy back on feet and creating growth and inflation, well, it may happen this year and a higher global inflation may interfere with our central bank's plans to cut the interest rates as well, they now consider that inflation has slowed enough to allow some policy loosening. So it is now worth keeping an eye on how these Chinese stimulus measures and news will impact the rest of the world. But the good news is until we see some concrete results from the Chinese stimulus measures, softer policies for the Fed and for the other major central banks, except for Japan, remain on the menu of this first half. And in this context, the Bank of Canada kept its rates unchanged at yesterday's monetary policy meeting and called the end of the rate hikes. The European Central Bank will be meeting today and will certainly vehicle the same exact message that the policy tightening is over in Europe as well. But that's not enough because when it comes to the European Central Bank, what investors want to know is when the ECB will start cutting the interest rates. Now, if we had this conversation just two weeks ago, I would say that the European Central Bank would push back on expectations of premature and excessive rate cuts for this year because at some point the market was pricing in a 6.25 base point rate cuts from the European Central Bank this year. But after having heard Lagarde say that the first rate cuts could come in summer in Europe, I am more balanced going into today's ECB meeting because inflation has come lower but we saw an uptick in the latest figures. The rising shipping costs due to the Red Sea tensions and the positive pressure that we see in oil prices mean that upside risks for inflation prevail. But on the other hand, the slowdown in European economies well, is an ugly reality because released yesterday, the Eurozone PMI figures were all but encouraging. The aggregate activity in the Eurozone remained in the contraction zone for the eighth consecutive month. And while well, the slowdown also accelerated in January this year, except for manufacturing, but everything is in the contraction zone right now. And a hedge fund called Cube apparently built a 1 billion US dollar short position against German stocks. And Goldman Sachs says that a Trump presidency in the US would increase risk for European businesses. And economically sensitive pockets of the European markets, like the German industries, would be the most exposed. So we all wish good luck to Christine Lagarde for today's presser. Now, the euro dollar is stuck between its 50 and 200 day moving averages ahead of the meeting. Any hawkish message should send the pair above the 50 day moving average, while any dovish language should encourage a sustainable move in the euro dollar below the 200 day moving average. So this is all for today. I'm Ipek Oskar and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive messages. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. And follow us on Instagram on X and on 
LinkedIn for regular market updates and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. And please don't forget to hit the like button on these videos to let us know that you enjoy them. So I will meet you again tomorrow. And until then, good day trading. Thank you.